Amen. or our own ambitions. Amen. So I'm very grateful to you all, and thank you very much. God bless. I say I am honoring the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Amen. Jesus. I want to honor my husband, Kevin Galloway, um, who has allowed me to pursue what we believe to be the will of God for my life in this season. I honor my children, Kevin and Michael, for um, being willing to share me with the community. I thank all of you that supported me. I do not take your vote of confidence lightly. I am humbled and honored to serve you. And I can only promise you that I will serve you to the best of my ability. And I decree and declare that God will bless us and keep us. He will cause his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord will lift up his countenance upon us and give us his peace. And the name of the Lord is upon us. I bless all of you and thank you, Miss Inez Brown, and all of those that were part of putting this together. May your fruit and your labor not be in vain. Thank you. Good afternoon to all. Today is a special day. And I welcome to all the special guests and our speakers and to many friends, supporters, and those that I've come to know as I worked for this position here. But it was with hard work and with special people. And I had a small committee. If I could acknowledge Michelle and Mary and Barb and Will and Linda and Lucy, a small committee, but we worked hard and we did the best we could with what we knew and what we knew would work. When I made it through the primary, hey, it was full steam ahead, and we made it to the general, and here I am. But I have friends and supporters throughout this city, people that didn't even live in the ward that was giving me support, letting me know they were in my corner. They would pass the information on to others they knew. I appreciated that. I have sisters here that drove two hours to get here just for this ceremony. And it's not, I know it's not easy with the type of weather we sometimes go through and what you deal with on the expressway, but I really appreciate that. It was a big surprise to see them here. Plus, this is not going to be an easy journey. I know it will be a journey of many twists and turns, but I believe in the city. I believe in the people and the citizens. I've seen so much happen that has changed when they said it couldn't happen, but the people made it happen. And I believe it can still keep happening. Yes, we have a city of problems that we got to deal with, and we have people in positions to handle some of those problems from the chief to the fire department to the mayor to the, to the emergency manager. We all have a role. But together we could be so strong, and this city can again be acknowledged as an outstanding city in the nation. We used to have so many outstanding activities, so many outstanding programs from the schools, the police department. People would come to city to see what we had and how we put it together. And I know we can do it because this city does not give up. Thank you. Good afternoon, and I too want to thank God for blessing all of us in giving particularly me the strength and wisdom that I've had for the more than 25 years on the City Council in working to make Flint better than what it was when I was here. And we've had a lot of challenges in our community, and we've seen a lot of change in our community, but when we look around, we are still better off today than we were more than 25 years ago when I first came on the City Council. I want to thank my wife for more than 40 years sticking by my side and making sure 
that we did the right things here at the city of Flint to move the city forward and my colleagues. I'm looking so forward and working with my colleagues on the city council. We have a lot of challenges ahead of us, um, but I think together, you know, we're all here for the right reason and that's to improve our community and, and reflect our actions to our constituents that have supported us uh, to be here today. And I really look forward to that. And more than ever, Ms. Brown, she's been the city clerk. She's, she puts in tirelessly hours of making sure that the council runs well, that we have a good staff, and that we move forward. And I want to continue, um, again, working with Ms. Brown and thanking her for all that she does. The last thing is that what is so important to me is making sure that we, as a city council, project ourselves to the community, to the state, that we are prepared to take back over the city. We don't need an emergency manager. We need to work with the emergency manager. There are some things that we have to do. We have to get a budget in place. We have to get the audit completed. We have to put a transition advisory board in place. That's going to be all of our responsibilities. And how we conduct ourselves will determine how quickly that process goes into, in, into place. And I'm determined uh, as a council person to make sure that I participate and work to make that process move forward. And I've worked with Mr. Early in the past. I've worked with him uh, for a few weeks now. And I continue to want to be able to have that relationship and work in the future. And I'm working toward you leaving. I'm not looking for you to be here for a long period of time. So I, I want you to understand my goal. My goal is to turn government back to the people of the city of Flint. And And I know we're going to have differences, and, and I anticipate that. I hope that our differences are not projected to the community, that they're projected to each other, that we don't take it personal, as Floyd Clack said. When it's over, we're done, we move on to the next issue. So I'm looking forward to the next four years. I'm hoping that we overcome our challenges very quickly, and God bless all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Uh, one thing they have learned, even the new ones, when they say one minute, once you get the mic, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Next will be our emergency manager, young man that's been around Flint for a few times, Darnell Early. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. For even in times like these, when things are difficult, he lets us know that he is still on the throne. And that means that things that we may try to plan for ourselves may not just turn out the way we thought they should, but the way he had intended for them to. To the master of ceremonies, man who I have come to know and respect after many years of working not only in Flint, but with the legislature when I was there. The Reverend Clergy, Mayor Walling, to the City Council, and to the administration and the staff here today. Back in 2002, well over 11 years ago now, while serving as Flint's City Administrator, I stood at this very podium before the City Council, serving at the time the residents, and the greater Flint community, and took the same oath of office that you have taken here today. Those of you who were here at that time remember, it was a very tumultuous and divisive time in the city's history as it marked the recall of the city mayor of the city. And my swearing in as the temporary or interim mayor, as was required by the city's charter, as I recall, the first thing I said was, OK, now what? But again, as God would have it, he had a plan. I didn't have to worry about putting one together. During that period of uncertainty, approximately five months in duration, 
The City Council, then under the leadership of Council President uh, Scott Kincaid at the time, I, the staff, all the employees, all the labor unions, business and civic leaders, and other stakeholders throughout the city and throughout the region were able to establish and implement a common goal of turning the city of Flint around. Also during that period of time, it became apparent that the depth and complexity of the financial uh, governance and organizational challenges we faced required intervention from the state through what was then Public Act 72, if there was ever going to be any hope of restoring the city to financial solvency. <clears throat> For the following year and a half now, after that determination, when Emergency Manager Ed Kurtz and I worked with the staff and the City Council to bridge the gap between the administration and the elected city officials, while in the process reducing a structural budget deficit of some $20 million, mm -hmm and subsequently bonding for the remaining eight million or so to stabilize the city financially. The success we achieved together resulted in the financial emergency, at least the shorter term financial budgetary aspects of it, being abated in 2004. But it will soon be apparent that the longer term needs for organizational efficiencies and effectiveness consequently proved left wanting. Fast forward to 2011, I was asked by the Department of Treasury to serve on the independent financial review team that confirmed Treasury's initial assessment of the city's financial condition, which was that the city of Flint was indeed <clears throat> headed toward another financial emergency. Now, just to be fair and in the spirit of full disclosure, these financial emergencies in predominantly urban core cities in Michigan and around the country are generally the result of a number of factors, including but certainly not limited to the loss of revenues coupled with increasing expenditures for providing current services, loss of tax base, <clears throat> loss of jobs, declines in population, tumbling housing values, burgeoning legacy costs such as retiree care, health care, and other expenses related to retirement and pension funding that we are obligated to just to name a few of the more obvious conditions. Now, any one of these factors in and of themselves can add tremendous strain to an already distressed community's chances of remaining financially solvent, especially during what has been one of the most difficult economically and socio-politically challenging decades since the Great Depression. Add to that mix organizational dysfunction and poor decision-making by the elected and appointed officials in charge and other factors as cited in the review team's 2011 report, and it is a little wonder that the state, under its legal auspices, intervened a second time as the deficits continued to grow. Now, it is about two years since the appointment of the city's second emergency manager, and due to a series of appointments, reappointments, court actions, referendums, and legislative changes, Mine is now the fourth. But more importantly, and looking ahead, the question today is, can we all work together as we did when I was the interim mayor, and from 2002 to 2004 under Public Act 72, to position the city of Flint once again towards that common goal of setting a sustainable course towards a well-managed, financially stable, <clears throat> 